hang back and provide cover. We need to retake this camp. We don't have any air support, the manpower. Our men are trapped up there. Our ammo depot is 40 yards away. There's everything we need to stay in this fight. Let me do this, sir. Let's show him some love with the 120s. You all right, mate? Come on, get your arms around me. But you're not gonna die, okay? RPG! Red platoon! Rod. Hey, young man, how are you? I am doing great. How are you this morning? Very good. Oh my God, that's a lot of outposts uh, there. <laughs> well, I had to do like a junket presentation, right? Yeah. Yeah, the good old days. How you doing? You're in Vegas. Yeah, we just reopened about a week or two ago, but now we're on the rise again. So I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, listen, I'm a big, uh, I'm, I'm a big Vegas goer, and I got a big Vegas project, in fact, coming up. Oh, really? And, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. I just tell people we take it one day at a time. I mean, there's just no other way to until we get a vaccine, one day at a time. You know. So I, I don't know how the casinos can stay open, but. And I, I've been quarantined for months. I mean, I just go out for a century. Yeah, I come back. But, and when I do go out, people aren't wearing masks. People aren't <laughs> social distancing. And I'm Good just luck. Like, Good luck, buddy. Yeah. Good luck to you. Well, I am so thrilled to talk to you this morning. And uh, uh, this movie is just one of the most visceral experiences I've ever had. Oh, thank you very much. And I went in cold to this movie. I mean, I knew of it was based on true events, and, but I had no idea what I, I was in store. Mm. And uh, so, so, so it's based on true events. Tell me about your, your meetings with Jake Tapper. Well, um, you know, uh, it took me a while to get involved with this, uh, with this project. But the, when I did eventually uh, get the movie up and running, I called up Jake Tapper. And it was interesting because, you know, he's really excited to talk about making a movie. And I'm really excited to talk about politics. And so we're always talking sort of at, at cross purposes there. But, uh, you know, I really admired Jake for a long time. And what's really amazing is this book that he wrote called The Outpost that this movie is based on. I don't know how the guy survives, you know, because he does six, six days a week. He's on the air and a show that it really has to prepare for. And he wrote this extraordinarily researched uh, book about, the, you know, this outpost and this incredible event that occurred there. And early on in the movie, for all the soldiers, you flash their names right. in, in front of them. And I thought to myself, I'm never going to remember all these names. But by the end of the movie, not only do you remember their names, you feel like you're part of Bravo Troop 361 Calvary. Yeah, yeah. Well, that really was that really was the point. We were so careful in that first hour of the movie to have you know who these guys are. And by the way, we only flash their last names: Scusa, you know, Martin Romache. Because in Afghanistan, and I think in Iraq, and when I was in the military, the only way that you knew people were by their last names. You never called them by their first names. Some people had best friends. They didn't know what their first names were until, you know, uh, you know until they were ready to leave or get out of the unit. And pre-production for this film has to be akin of going into battle itself. The details were numerous, I'm right. sure. Well, I mean, you know, I, we didn't have that much money, and we didn't have time necessary to make the movie probably the entire movie's schedule and the entire budget was less than you know the entire in one scene in um saving private ryan so in order to achieve this we had to really be very well prepared i had a lot of military experts on the set with me i had a lot of the best stunt coordinator in the world maybe was uh, was with me and i myself am a military guy so we were able to really to really prepare uh, very carefully. For, uh, for because the, the set looked so bleak and the location so stark. It was just, it, it just wasn't, there's was nothing glamorous about this movie at all. It's, well, no, it, it's definitely, you know, this is not a movie like Top Gun where you come out and say, sign me up. But you do really know what happened to these guys. And the fact that it's so realistic um, makes the movie, in a way, um, much more visceral, much more exciting, much more um, immersive. And because it's so real, I think you're very proud 
uh, to be an American in, in the sense that these Americans did this impossible task. And these weren't SEALs, these weren't Rangers, these were just regular grunts. And uh, what they pulled off is really beyond belief. Two men won the, uh, received the Medal of Honor for, this, for their actions. And the sound design mixing this movie, it's essential. It really is. Yeah. The, um, we spent so much time on sound design for, for the film. And, you know, in a way, it, it's a shame that most people are, are not going to see it in theaters because I really designed it that way. You know, we have to deal with what's going on in the world. And, um, and that particularly what you guys are going through in, in Nevada and, and Las Vegas. But, the, um, <clears throat> but, you know, I really designed it so that, you know, I'd have a bullet coming from the left, a bullet coming from the right, you know, the explosions. And, and the sound had to be perfect. We, we made uh, sure that every weapon that is fired, that, that sound you hear is the, weapon, uh, the sound that that weapon makes. Again, that's our military experts at work there. And that scene on the bridge where they're talking about Denny's, uh, yeah. <laughs> you, like, unbelievable. You, during that sequence, you go back and forth, in and out and around that bridge. I mean, that was a phenomenal scene. In one shot. Yeah, in one shot. Yeah. Well, the whole movie is shot that way. And um, there are lots of tricks to the trade. But we had these quote-unquote wonders where I'm, I'm hoping that when people are late at night, they go down to get a midnight snack, they open the refrigerator, and, they, and they'll say, wait a second, how did they do that? Now, how do they do that? I'm really, I'm really proud of it. But again, the, the idea of having these wonders was really to immerse you into the scene and the notion that anything can happen at any time, right? And uh, that was that, that shot took all day to do and it took a lot of planning and um, it was difficult, there, but it's great. There were so many scenes that were difficult to watch, but I think I think it was Carter and the image of him sleeping among the body bags mm -hmm. that just burned in my mind. Well, it's it's a true story that and at the that after the battle that Carter, who received the Medal of Honor um, for his actions on that day, when he woke up, he realized he was in a room full of um, uh, full of body bags and uh, body bags of his own men and body bags of the enemy, and it was. Um, to him a very profound experience. I'm glad that we were able to, to capture that. You know, I, I don't want to give a sense to your, to the people that are watching that this movie is depressing. It's, it's in a way it's, it's, although it deals with war, I think that you are more taken by the heroism and the individual, uh, the rugged individualism of the, the men involved than, uh, than anything, than anything else. And, you know, and I'm, and even the men who, who were killed in this battle, they represent the American spirit. And, um, and I know that sounds corny. I, I know it does, you know. And when I was a film critic, I would attack films that were overly sentimental. But I think we managed to do this in an unsentimental way. How could you not have your patriotism after watching this movie, you know, and, and feeling for these guys? And all incredible performances, but I have to single out Caleb Landry Jones. I mean, I mean especially uh, towards the end, him in the, in, the, in, the, in the Humvee, and I mean, you, you're an emotional wreck with him. You really are. I, but I, I really am hoping that Caleb um, and some of the other actors, but you're right to point out Caleb in particular, uh, I hope that he is remembered uh, when um, it's time to remember such things. And... Uh, Caleb, uh, by the way, was nowhere near the guy that he played. I mean, when I first met Caleb, he was like 115 pounds and he had hair down to his ass and, you know, and, you know, he was a dude and he played the guitar <laughs> and like, and had weed all the time and so on. And, and he went He was on. one of the X-Men, you know, so I'm like, really? He was, <laughs> well, he was also in Get Out. Yeah. He was a brother in Get Out and he was a guy thrown out the window and three billboards. And um, he's a... He's kind of a, he's a genius actor and, and you'll see that on full display in the outpost. I, I remember veterans talking about the survivors of like Hacksaw Ridge. And so yeah. I can only imagine the difficulty that was 50 years for them, you know, 60 years seeing it later. I can imagine the difficulty, the survivors seeing this movie. Was there many conversations about that? Did they contact well, you? Well, you know, we, we want to do right by all these guys. And, and you want to know something else? We want to do right by the families of the fallen. And we invited all of them to come and see the movie last October. Uh, Jake Tapper and I were really unnerved by what the reaction would be, but I'm, I'm pleased to say that um, they seem to be okay with it. They seem more than okay. They seem 
um, to be very happy that the, their loved ones are now going to live in memoriam and that the soldiers see that what they did that day is being recognized by the world. This battle is a part of American military folklore and should be a part of American history. I was going to say on my final thoughts here today is that we remember these historical battles from Pearl Harbor, you know, Hamburger Hill, and but we don't have modern battles that are remembered for their heroism. And I this think this one will be very important. Very yeah, important. That's the first thing I thought. Thank Rod, you very much, man. Thank you so much, man. Incredible film, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck. And come visit us in Vegas real soon. We'd love to have you. Oh, don't worry. I I I, I couldn't love your city more. I'm there uh, all the time. I'm going to do a big project there. But uh, let's let's get safe. Let's get healthy. Thank you, man. Thanks, Rob. Take care. Bye-bye.